can you tell me about that little that little um trick and habit a little bit from your point of view how does sure. how does like a really busy professional with a family you know implement this in their life a strategic person then ask of all the things that i have to do what are the handful that are truly impactful and in the one thing we want to take that further if I only got one thing done today or this week, what would that one thing be that would be most impactful? And that becomes your number one. And then you say, well, if I could do two, what would the second thing be, right? And what's funny is like, Gary's always thought this way. And so if you read any of our books, you know, we have like this central models that we build around. And in our observation and in Gary's experience, like the three core things that if you get them right, make your investing go crazy were criteria terms and network. So if you know what your criteria for an investment are and you won't invest unless you have a match, then your only job becomes to go find things that match that criteria. And your terms don't matter that much until you find a property, right? So people will mess a long time and figure out all of this other stuff. It's like, well, until you have an investment property, why are you spending so much time there? So when we were first investing, we figured out our criteria based on what we could afford and what we wanted to have happen. And then I spent all of my time looking for great investments. And as a busy professional, um, I live in Austin, Texas. I live in 78704, which is the center of town. And I remember all the seasoned investors were like, you'll never find investments there. And I had made one investment. It was 30 minutes away. And I really didn't enjoy that process because I was having to drive out there to show it. And you know, when something went wrong, I would lose my entire lunch break. And I just told my wife, it's like, we're doing this, um, we're operating at our own speed. How can we find more deals close to home? And so like, one of like simple strategies, this is aligning your dominoes. I still have to drive to work every day and I have to drive home from work every day. Well, I started driving a different way every day, sometimes going way out of my way. But what I was doing was I was looking for piles of newspapers on the lawn, right? Abandoned homes. I was looking for things where the grass was high. I was looking for properties that might be off market and available. And guess what? We started finding deals. And you mentioned this earlier. In the very beginning, I'd pull up to the curb. I'd get the address. I'd go and get our MLS data. And I would run the numbers. And I'd say, this is what I think would work. And we ran the numbers probably on 100 properties before we made our first offer. But by the time we did, like I was so, f you could do the math so fast because you've done it the long way so many times. You can pull up to the curb and you're one of those guys who can just kind of tick it off in your head. You're like, okay, this is probably going to rent for about 1500 a side. I bet we can get it for 235. Um, it's going to need about 15,000 and make ready work. Like you just start doing the math. And you're, you're definitely going to do the math long form, but you can make assessments really fast if you do the hard work of trolling through the properties for things that might be deals and doing the math. And so in the very beginning, you're just looking for criteria, 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 criteria. Um, so that was how, like, I didn't have the one thing then, but we were trying to live it because that's how Gary makes all of us live. That was how we interpreted it at the very beginning. If right. we have the right deal flow, if you have a good deal, the money will show up is what I've found. You don't even have to have money to invest to yourself. You can find a co-investor. Right. A couple of things that, you know, just in that story that I kind of highlight is, first of all, you're in motion. You're actually driving and doing this. You're, or you weren't just sitting there waiting for some, something else to take your monkey brain um, attention <laughs> away. You know, you're right. doing it. And then the second thing is this idea of, you know, co-pairing two tasks. Like for example, you want to read books and you want to work out. Well, go read books on the treadmill, right? Or um, go listen to audiobooks when you're folding laundry. You know, you, you go through and you identify your your big main things and getting that one or two things done. Maybe just because it's like edit a podcast. Like, you know, maybe I probably shouldn't be doing that, but you know, just one of those things where I'm like, eh, I'll do that at the end after I finish everything. And never, I never finish anything, so it never gets done. Um, what are your, you have this technique for identifying the big ideas, the big dominoes. Let me walk us through that. Well, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, right? The Pareto's principle, right? It's the principle of you start with the things that are most effective first. And, uh, we have a question in the book called the focusing question. What's the one thing I can do 
such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. And in our experience, and we've been doing this for a little over five years and taught this to thousands, if not tens of thousands of people at this point, um, most people actually know the answer, right? And they just procrastinate. And so how do we get around that? I think that half the battle is clearly identifying that it is a priority. Because there's stuff that are, is on our to-do list that we actually do have to do that's not important. And it's, okay, you know, I, I'm going to say, yeah, put that to the end of the day, but you still have to get it done. What you wanna do is do that stuff that's a higher priority that gives you more impact. Because guess what? When you do that consistently over time, you, know, you just said, why am I doing that? That was my thought too. You edit your own podcast. If you're really doing your one thing for investing well, unless it's something that gives you pleasure and you wanna be a, a podcast editor as a hobby, it might be a better dollar productive use of your time to assign someone else that task who lives and breathes editing podcasts, right? so that you can go find another deal. Now, I'm not saying that, I'm saying that hypothetically, I'm not saying that's true for you, Lane, but that's kind of the math you do. So um, I'm gonna flash this on your screen, right? Um, we have a process we talk about in the book called the 411. And I've been doing this for, it'll be 18 years this year. And you have your annual goals, what you wanna achieve at the top. I have them for my work life and my personal life. And then each month at the beginning of the month, I ask, what do I need to achieve? What are the big rocks, the priorities, the 20% I have to achieve towards those annual goals this month? And then I write those down. And then each week I look down and I say, based on my goals for the year, and then based on my goals for my month that were based on those goals, what do I have to achieve this week to be on track for my month and my year, right? You're working backwards. Mm -hmm. And I have a, if you can see, there's a whole bunch of stuff written up here. You go down here, I've got handwriting. There's only like four things on my week professionally. It's a really short list because these are the only the big rocks. And I carry this around in my journal every single day. And when I start my day, I look at this list and I look at my calendar and I just say, did I block the time or not? And that is the great trick in life. If you know what you're supposed to do, go to your calendar and make an appointment with yourself to do it. It's funny how simplistic that sounds but there is research out there that suggests if you say, I'm going to do it, and then you go to the trouble of saying, this is when and where I'm going to do it and put it on your calendar, you're about three times more likely to do it. All right. Most so people use their calendar for meetings with other people. Wealthy people, in my opinion, use their calendar for appointments with themselves first. So with that 411 list, is that a monthly list that you kind of compile and you just work on throughout the week and revise? No, it's, it's, it's very different from my to-do list. I keep my to-do list off of this document. This is my 20%, my one thing list. So it starts at the top. If you just took a piece of paper and took three lines and divided it up, at the top, you'd say my annual goals. Like for me, one of my number one measures for investing, like for my wealth, is I'm tracking my net worth. And I have a goal. I know where I started the year and I know where I want to end the year, right? And then based on that goal, I ask, what are the activities that I need to accomplish this month to be on track for that goal? And then each week I say, based on my monthly goals, what do I have to do this week to be on track for that? Because you're working backwards from your clear priority, there's not a whole lot of options. Um, here's a dad trick for you. Do you have kids yet? No, no. Okay. When you have little kids, you're going to go to a restaurant and they hand out the kitty menus, right? invariably there's a maze on that. So this is just a fun little party trick. You can, you know, you, when you have your nephews or nieces right next time, you can show them this. If you work the maze forwards, that's where all the branches are. If you start in the center and work your way out, there's almost no wrong turns. And I think of that as a metaphor for, you know, we say begin with the end in mind. That's what it looks like. What do I want to accomplish? I'm going to work backwards. Because when you look back in your life, you see the milestones of how you got there. But if you look forward, you see all the options. So the trick is, let's go out to the end of the year or the end of the month and work backwards from what we want to have happen. And usually the big milestones are very clear to us. Well, I guess I, guess I have to do this and this. Right. Well, then focus all your energy on those few things. And I have another list. It's actually on the back of this, so I, I clearly know 